I'm searching for life again. I grew up in a small town in South Louisiana. Grew up in a family of five girls. My dad desperately wanted a son. Desperately wanted a son. I'm searching for real again. I turned 18 and joined the army and met my husband in the military. I only did my obligation and then followed him as a spouse in the military. In 2003, Iraq, of course, started and he was in and out of a war zone for probably about 13 years. I'm searching for love. During that time, four years before my husband left for Iraq, my mom's sister, who was like an aunt to me, and it's such a spirit-filled woman. 99, she was battling breast cancer. And 2000, she succumbed to her cancer. I had a four-year-old daughter that she had to see this. I couldn't leave her nowhere. I had to take her with me because we're military. We were stationed in Fort Polk and I had to take my father to the VA. And Monday morning I took him and his little doctor said, it's cancer. And I started to cry and he stopped. He looked at me, he said, what are you crying for? He said, dry your eyes. The type of cancer he had was mesothelioma. So within 24 hours, I lost an aunt. And here it is, my dad told he's going to live six months. Three years into his diagnosis, I went home for the 4th of July. And we were all hanging out, and my little sister was sick. And so we went to the emergency room, and the little doctor said, you know, she's retaining water and doing a CAT scan. He said, I'm sorry, she has tumors throughout her liver. She was 22, her child was three, and that was Jamarius. She got to spend her last Christmas with her baby. In March, she succumbed to it. And my husband left for Iraq war two days later, and I came from a family of faith, a family that seen hardship, a family that knew what it's like not to have food in the freezer. I was probably about 26, and my mom said on the way to the emergency room before she passed, she looked at my mom and she said, Mama, why me? Why me? And my mom's response to it was, God is not making a mistake. And just keep trusting him. I thought, God, is making a mistake. Like, why are you hurting the people that love you, they do good by people, they share your word, they live your word? For the first time in my life, I experienced a depression that I didn't understand. Anger, I hated God, I, not hate, I just thought all this that I believe, how could you do this? After she died, the whole community, my whole family, Jamarius became like everybody's baby. He always wiggled when he was little, so we called him Wiggy. My father and my mom raised him. He was just a beautiful kid. He was a beautiful soul. My dad never had a son. So Jamarius was his world. After my dad passed, it was tough on Jamarius. And then not even a year later, my dad's brother passed. And then two years after that, my dad's nephew, who was like a, a huge mentor to him, passed. And he just told my mom, he said, Mama, I gotta leave. I wanna go see the mountains in California. And he left. Sometime throughout the night, my mom was so concerned, she was following him on his phone. My sister's a police officer and she's head of dispatch. My mom called my sister. She said, you still at work? She said, I've been tracking him, but he stopped. And it's not like Jamari is not to answer me or call me or text me. And so my sister said, well, let me call. There were seven highway patrol areas. And the first one she picked, the guy answered the phone. He said, that's funny you would call. He said, I just worked an accident with an unidentified young black male, a good Samaritan, pulled him out the car. 
and he said he was flown to a hospital, the local trauma center, the closest to us at the time was Loma Linda. And my mom was sent right to the emergency room. It was hard for her to believe that she had to bury her child, and now she's about to bury her child's child. Even though I had was angry at God in 2003 to probably about 2005. When I say angry, I was angry. When I say hurt, I was hurt. My husband got hurt in Afghanistan, and I got the knock on the door, like you see in the movies and stuff, and he got hurt really bad, and he was in a Saudi hospital. After he got better, everything seemed like for a little while was going fine. My best friend, my only friend, best friend at the time, took her life. She was a Air Force veteran. I still can't believe it. And my little sister is 35. She's the baby baby of the group and she gets sick. And she started to get the same nauseated feeling that my other sister had. It was such a aggressive cancer. And the doctor told her that if she would have waited one week, the cancer would have spread so rapidly that she would have had at, at the most four months to live. So talk about faith. We got together, we all prayed, got her through it. She got through it, she's incredible, she's strong. And it's been said that when you experience certain things, sometimes the only place you find yourself is on your knees. And it was around 2007 that I fell on my knees. I apologized and repented to God for being so angry and so hurt and for walking away from him for so long. I just started really, really dedicating a big portion of my life to God and living godly, not just reading scripture. About a year later, we moved to Northern Virginia area. I'm a dental assistant. The doctor I was working with, Dr. Willis, he's quiet. I was talking to a patient. She's kind of rude, but I, I interpreted it as rude. And I said, ma'am, I'll give you a few minutes. And she looked at me and she said, I've just been diagnosed with cancer. And just the word kind of just shook me in my core. I was like, can I give you a hug? And I tried to quote some scripture. I'm not good at quoting scripture. Dr. Willis was passing behind me going to lunch and he heard me and he stopped. He came back in, printed out the scripture the right way and he put the scripture next to me and he said, I'm not gonna let you mess up the Lord's word like that. <laughs> and so him and I became spiritual friends. And right before Jamarius died, Dr. Willis texted me and he said, hey, he said, if you don't mind, I had to call him like, hey, where did we fly? I, I have no clue. It's just a panic situation. And he told me Ontario. And he said, do you mind if I pass your information along to some of my friends? And I said, if they could just pray for us, that would be, a, that would be more than enough because that encounter with Dr. Willis and him and I having conversations and God could have designed for my little nephew to die at any mile marker on that highway. It was 30 minutes outside of Loma Linda. And so for me, I know that God is intentional. Jamorius was an organ donor. From what we were told from the legacy program, he impacted over 200 lives. In fact, one of the recipients to his kidneys and his pancreas was on his deathbed, and he had to have both. And it's rare that you could get both. He wants to meet with me, and I thought for, for a little while, I told my sister, I say, I don't think I'm ready for that. And the Spirit of God landed on my heart to say, maybe he needs to say thank you to a family member for receiving life. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But with all the tragedies that we've gone through, biggest part of that scripture that stands out to me is the part that says hope. 
you have to hope that there's something better on the other side. And God said, just the fate of a mustard seed is enough. <laughs>